Welcome to module four in the course, Women and Youth Empowerment in Agriculture. Module four is titled Job Creation and Employment Opportunities for Women and Youth in Agriculture. The module introduces course participants to the opportunities for job creation and employment for both women and youth in agriculture. We shall examine issues related to public and private investments to facilitate the creation of job opportunities, as well as the typical kinds of jobs in the agricultural sector. At the end of this model, the course participant should be able to elaborate strategies and identify opportunities for job creation and employment for women and youth in agriculture. In the form of an introduction, a rhetorical question that comes to mind is, what is the future of jobs in agriculture? Can women and youth have access to modern jobs in the agricultural sector? Over the next decades, hundreds of millions of Africans will reach working age. Where will they work? How much will they earn? The core of the development challenge, therefore, will be to sustain and improve employment for billions of workers and create jobs for the next generation. Amid demographic and technological shifts, it is therefore important to take a closer look at the role the food system plays in workforce development. In many developed countries in the world, the agricultural value chain provides more jobs than any other sector for the rich countries. Agriculture is expected to remain the top employer for the foreseeable future. The value chain extends beyond agricultural production. It includes food, storage, processing, distribution, transportation, retailing, preparation, restaurants, and many other services along the chain from the farm to the consumer's system table. As per capita incomes increase and eating patterns shift, the demand for jobs along the value chain in the off-farm segments will increase. A lot more can be done, therefore, to strengthen the impact that the agriculture food system has in providing jobs and incomes. But most new and good jobs are to be generated down or upstream in the agricultural chain, with the demand for aggregation, storage, processing, logistics, food preparation, restaurants, and other related services becoming increasingly important many employment opportunities may emerge off the farm in the larger agriculture or value systems or value chain. According to the World Bank, while the majority of youth will wish to see their future outside agriculture, many good job opportunities on and off the farm shall remain in agriculture. But the challenge is to make the agricultural sector and its up and downstream activities competitive through innovation, public investment in supportive rural to make them sufficiently attractive to young and older farmers alike. This remains a daunting challenge and an unfinished agenda, which is equally important to reach the sustainable development goals of the United Nations, especially that on eradicating poverty and boosting shared prosperity. In summary, therefore, the entire agriculture value chain has a lot of activities which if properly enhanced, organized, modernized and supervised, it will create millions of jobs for blue collar and white collar work. Value chains may include a wide range of activities and an agricultural value chain typically will include the development and dissemination of agricultural inputs, raw materials, plants and animal genetic materials, farm organization, farm production, post-harvest handling, processing, provision of technologies of production and handling, grading criteria and facilities, cooling and packing technologies, post-harvest local processing, industrial processing, storage, transport, finance, and feedback from the markets. In fact, the figure below shows a typical agriculture value chain. Here is a typical agricultural value chain, which starts from the production to the consumption. At the production level, we have the smallholder farmers or commercial farmers, if you want, farmer associations, 
and provide us the farming inputs like fertilizer, pesticides. This moves to the next level of harvesting and transportation. Small farmers are involved at this stage, farmer associations, and then you have logistics companies who will take charge of transportation. This moves into primary processing and storage. Here, the key agents are the primary processors, machinery suppliers, and even machinery repairers. This moves later to the secondary processing where more value is added to the commodity. Here, key agents and key players are the secondary processors and machinery suppliers, as well as engineers that will repair machines. The next stage in the food value chain is distribution, packaging, ha and handling. Here, packaging companies are needed. Logistics companies play an important role. And this moves on to the wholesalers and to the retail markets. The wholesalers are also, also play an important role in distribution to get the commodities to the retail market, the retail supermarkets. The key agents, therefore, are the grocery stores and supermarkets, as well as food and beverage companies. So the chain for agriculture is long in opportunities for employment, many opportunities for gainful activity, whether permanent or temporary. As Africa's largest employer, therefore, agriculture offers the greatest opportunity to boost economic growth and create jobs for young people in the continent. To capitalize on the untapped potential of the African youth, agriculture must be made attractive and a viable option for young people. Stakeholders from both the public and private sectors have a critical role to play in incentivizing and facilitating more young people to find decent work in agricultural value chains. What kind of work can they find in agricultural value chains? The first kind is permanent full-time employment. The agricultural sector can create permanent full-time employment. Permanent employees are those who work for an employer and are paid directly by that employer. Permanent employees do not have a predetermined end date to employment. In addition to their wages, they often receive benefits like subsidized healthcare, paid vacations, holidays, sick time off, or contributions to a pension fund or a retirement plan. Permanent employees are often eligible to switch job positions within their companies or organizations. Permanent employees of large companies are generally protected from abrupt job termination by severance policies like advance notice in case of layoffs or formal discipline procedures. They may be eligible to join a union and may enjoy both social and financial benefits of their employment. Permanent employees typically have advantages in summary, healthcare benefits, retirement contributions, paid off time, long-term career planning. These kinds of advantages are aspirations for women and youth in an agricultural sector in the African continent, which provides access to many decent employment. Women and youth in Africa will aspire to have permanent full-time employment. But there is also non-permanent part-time employment. Agriculture has many non-permanent part-time and temporary employment opportunities. According to the International Labor Organization, the ILO, a temporary employee has a job that lasts for a short defined period of time. The time frame can be as brief as a few days or as long as a few weeks. In some cases, a temporary employee may even work as long as a couple of months or the length of a season. Some of the benefits of temporary employment include maintaining a steady income stream, avoiding unnecessary resume gaps, changing career fields, transition into full-time jobs. So temp temporary employment could be a, 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 a semi-permanent or a temporary fix to address a particular situation, but most importantly, is maintaining a steady stream of income. For the purpose of maintaining income flow, women and youths take up temporary employment. Whether it is full-time, part-time, permanent or temporary employment, the employment created within the agriculture sector and along the agricultural value chain could be either formal or informal. Formal employment represents workers who are protected by existing labor legislation and social security and includes the public and private employees 
who were under the coverage of labor laws. Formal employment with the stability it brings are uh, ideal for women and youth, most of whom are already in precarious livelihood situations in their communities. The challenge, therefore, for policymakers is to promote the creation of millions of formal jobs in the agricultural sector. Informal employment, which can also take place or actually exists within the agricultural value chain, not only it's not only employment in the informal sector, but also other workers who may be working in formal enterprises, but without a formal job contract. According to the International Labor Organization, they described informal employment as a total number of informal jobs, whether carried out in formal sector enterprises or in informal sector enterprises or in households and includes employees working in informal sector enterprises and those who are informally employed in the formal sector. Employers and self-employed workers employed in their own informal sector enterprises, members of informal producers' cooperatives. You may also have contributing family workers, informal or informal sector enterprises, as well as own account or self-employed workers engaged in the production of goods for own end use by their household. In fact, informal employment is prevalent along the agricultural value chain. This brings with it enormous challenges for women and youth who may have temporary difficulty and will want to ensure a steady stream, a steady flow of income, and some of them will find themselves in informal employment. Most informal workers, including both those who are self-employed and wage workers, are typically deprived of secure work, workers' benefits, deprived of social protection, and deprived of even a voice or representation in the enterprise's activities. The self-employed have to take care of themselves and their enterprises. Moreover, they often face a competitive disadvantage vis-a-vis -vis larger formal firms in capital and product markets. Informal wage workers also have to take care of themselves as they receive few, if any, employer-sponsored benefits. Moreover, both groups receive little, if any, legal or social protection. As a result of these and other factors, a higher percentage of people working in the informal economy compared to those working in the formal, econo formal economy are poor. A significant percentage of the global workforce, men, women, boys and girls, and their livelihood in the informal economy. The figure below from the International Labor Organizations, International Labor Organization demonstrates a possible classification of both formality and informality. Here from the ILO document, status of employment is, a point, is our point of takeoff. Employees in an organization, workers, or they are not classified by any status, okay? You can have employees or workers who are not classified by any status. Now you, you find out from them about their social security contribution. Do they have a do they contribute to a pension pension fund? If yes, it turns green. And when they contribute to a pension fund, it turns green, and that's good. It means they're formal, there is formal employment. When they have a pension fund, and there is, however, also paid annual leave, it turns again green. That is formal employment. Paid annual leave. Paid sick leave, green, it turns out to be formal employment. But when they, when workers or employees find themselves in a situation of the, whether it is a pension fund, you know, no pension fund, and the answer is no, these are typical informal, informal employees. They do not contribute to any pension fund, which means that they are not even known by the labor system. They are not even registered. They're not even recognized by the labor system. So pension fund, according to, I, to the ILO, social security contributions in general are a significant indicator of whether an employee is formally employed or informally employed. On the other hand, when the status of employment is that of someone who belongs to a, a cooperative, in this case, a producer's cooperative, 
and it takes and they take part in the activities whether production and consumption activities or that cooperative or distribution activities in and the cooperative is formally registered so we are in the formal sector then that is formal employment you could also have a situation where there are self-employed workers working on their own farms, working on their own enter in their own enterprises. We call them own account workers. They work for themselves. They produce commodities which are sold in the market. Yes, there is a unit of, of production. Then that's a formal, that's a formal employment. That's a formal sector. And it's a formal, and it's for, referred to as form, formal employment. But it could also be possible that so, someone on their own account workers produces commodities for sale and it's typically consumed at home, produces commodities, not sold, but for home consumption, then that's informal employment. It's not recognized in the system. Finally, you also have contributing family workers, family workers who work for a family, for a family uh, folk, and they do not have a social security contribution, they do not work, it is not a cooperative, they do not produce commodities for sale in the formal market, then this is a clear case of informal employment. So this is an interesting classification which the International Labor Organization uses to identify whether someone is formally employed or informally employed. Here we have a distribution of levels of formal and informal employment in some selected African countries. Botswana, for example, in 2006, in blue, light blue, public sector and state-owned enterprises were responsible for almost 25% of employment. Then, striped, you have private permanent, but formal employment also contributed for almost 25% 25% of employment in Botswana. In white, you have private, temporary, and informal employment. It's small for Botswana, that's about 10% of 15%. Then you have in dark blue, non-wage employment. These are workers who do not have an, a monthly or annual regular wage. It's in, it's in dark blue and there are almost 40% of workers in Botswana who are non in non-wage employment. So if you look at the dark blue for, for Democratic Republic of Congo, for Egypt, for Ghana, Malawi, Mali, Nigeria, Rwanda, Senegal, South Africa, Tanzania, and Zambia, with the exception of South Africa, you will observe that most of the workers are in dark blue and they are non-wage non -wage employment. This is a precarious situation which heightens poverty, reduces livelihood, reduces welfare, and puts the workers in a disadvantaged position, especially the women and youth. So in general, there is an increasing tendency of more informality and non-wage employment in the continent. So, we have to correct for informality and non-wage employment. To do this, African countries have to begin to create well-meaning formal enterprises, or there must be a strategy to formalize most of the informal enterprises within the continent. When public or private investments are undertaken in the agricultural sector, this promotes productivity as well as creates conditions for more employment. Productivity enhancing investments and the integration of smallholders into markets not only improves food security and resilience to food price volatility, but also improves incomes and creates jobs in agriculture. And through strong multiplier effects in the rural sector, it can be a foundation for growth and development more generally. Productivity improvement will require adoption of new and modern technologies Productivity improvement 
we require a promotion of research and development research, which comes up with new ways of doing things, produces new inputs, produces new communities and new commodities and new ideas. However, adoption of new commodities and inputs will not happen unless smallholders are better integrated into markets. They have the necessary skills, especially the young people, and risks can be managed, and there is an enabling environment, including adequate infrastructure, accessible finance, and conducive policies. Financial inclusion, domestic resource mobilization, infrastructure, and human resource development are very relevant for agricultural investment that will create jobs. Recognizing these linkages illustrates the wider importance of agriculture to lead to greater prospects for growth, opportunities, and job creation. Promoting investments assumes improved income forecasting and therefore specific actions to reduce risks as well as better access to, to credit. For example, it is also vital to secure the rights to land, water, more farmland and rangelands, whether those acquired within the customary framework or those formalized by modern law. It also entails facilitating contractual relationships between firms and within firms and between employers and agricultural workers. Public investment remains a must. Public investment will facilitate the activities, create a better business climate for the private sector. Commitments made in terms of government's public expenditure for agriculture, research and development and if infrastructure needs to be, to be honored because public expenditure, especially for infrastructure, will facilitate the performance of the agricultural sector, facilitate the performance of enterprises in the agricultural uh, subsector. The figure below shows us the linkage or the nexus of the different types of investments in, in agriculture and agro-processing, which can be done in rural and peri-urban areas, e.g. land preparation and development, construction and maintenance, agro-processing facilities and infrastructure, const in construction and maintenance of transportation infrastructure, as well as maintenance of agricultural value chain infrastructure. So the issue here is infrastructure. These investments will bring along opportunities for employment a small labor shall be required. So we are talking about at the center, you have agricultural investments. Agricultural investments will include investments in land development, investments in irrigation, investments in transport and transport infrastructure, agricultural investments on agro-processing technology, agro-processing infrastructure, machines, as well as agricultural investments on the value, on, you know, on the value chain. When this happens, there is need for technology to improve on the kinds of agricultural investments, in the culture of maintenance, as well as the user groups, which could which user groups or the beneficiary groups, which could be small scale farmers, medium scale farmers, or large commercial farmers. There is also to be weary, need to be weary about implementation because agricultural investments and plants, if not well implemented, we may not achieve the required or expected objectives. More importantly, financing. Investments in agricultural land improvement will, will, will create jobs because more labor is required for soil and water conservation techniques, for example. More labor will be needed for leveling, for terracing and contour bonding, okay? Private farms who no own their small farms will at the point of land preparation or land improvements tend to hire more workers, whether permanent or temporary workers, whether part-time or full-time, to be able to undertake activities related to land improvement. In addition to soil improvements, farmers must prevent erosion by carefully timing the application and timing cultivation and planting, managing water runoff and using other strategies to keep soil from blowing or washing away. Depending on the size of the farm, fertility management may be accomplished with hand tools, draft animals, or mechanized equipment. So therefore, can you imagine a situation where a farmer or a commercial farm or a cooperative organization invests in agricultural land improvements and takes so much, makes so much effort to ensure that 
soil and water conservation takes place and the soil and the land is that one which is productive for to generate more yields all that investment of effort will, re will require more help in hands and this creates an opportunity to hire other workers whether permanent or temporary there are also irrigation investments irrigation investments that could be made more labor shall be required to promote surface irrigation to watch out for drip irrigation and operating other water related infrastructure L labor will be required for installation labor will be required for procurement and supplies of equipment and materials labor will be required for water for water engineers you know well, labor will be required for consultants so there is a lot that can be uh, a lot of activities involved in the agriculture in, in the agricultural value chain and in this case at the, at the production level for irrigation people can can be employed to be able to serve the firm or the farm as a production unit after production we talk of semi-processing or manufacturing and in the rural areas we refer to agro processing investments more labor shall be needed in agro processing facilities and infrastructure for activities such as what sorting grading initial processing such as drying or milling activities as well as aggregating sorting packaging and transport transport and who are those to benefit from such activities subsistence farmers will benefit commercial farmers at the potential user groups for, for such activities. But the summary is that at, this, at the point of agro-processing investments, this creates opportunity for people of diverse skills and talents to be hired, to be used, to, to, to actualize, to deliver these services. You also, we also have transportation and its related investments. More labor can be created during the construction and maintenance of transport infrastructure related specifically to agriculture, such as farm and feeder roads, connections from agricultural areas to the main road network. So transport infrastructure, road construction in particular, tends to create temporary jobs when those roads are being constructed and youths found in those localities and those locales or areas are hired typically to provide services to those road constructing companies. The income which is realized by such youths, women, and, and possibly men are plowed back into their households and even plowed into their farms for further production by using such externally generated income to purchase input and even pay for what? To pay for more labor. There is also agriculture related construction. Investments in construction to support agricultural producers and processing businesses are job magnets. In agriculture related construction, we will need capital improvements, which includes modification to existing buildings or construction to new buildings at existing facilities. Agricultural related construction includes upgrades to facilities, upgrading water facility, electric heat, refrigeration, freezing and waste facilities. Agricultural related construction will also involve growing, processing and manufacturing construction, construction of storage facilities, construction of greenhouses, construction of livestock and poultry facilities, as well as construction of roads and bridges. There is also the possibility of investment in modern market infrastructure, investing in investing to facilitate agricultural commodity exchange creates opportunities for jobs. Investing in marketing creates opportunities for jobs, as well as diverse employment. Such investments may be in the form of what? Rural assembly market facilities, retail market outlets in peri-urban and urban centers. Market infrastructure includes warehouses and parking houses. It also includes promotion of supermarket activities, post-harvest and market standards related infrastructure, post-harvest and market standards related infrastructure. This may even be as modern as laboratories to test and establish that the commodity which has been produced meets the required market standards and quality. Facilities for electronic marketing shall also be required as part of the market infrastructure, as well as supply of public utilities related to marketing, energy, water, electricity, as even the internet 
for for the, for the for women and youth whose enterprises are market based so that they can pick up on e-commerce other private investments by agricultural sector entrepreneurs could also generate jobs at different levels such as in crop farms whether arable crop farms or plantation crop farms uh, livestock farms including pastoral and animal rearing maintenance and repair of farm installations private investments and entrepreneurs will need to hire farm managers in modern farm business management of their agricultural enterprises now in the crop farms what are the kinds of jobs what are the kinds of opportunities what are the kinds of activities for which more labor shall be required and paid for farm work in crop plantations is very diverse it varies according to the season of the year and the type of farm on a small farm the farmer and the family typically performs most of most if not all of these tasks while on a larger commercial farm the work may be done by permanent or contracted temporary employees. You will require workers or labor for spraying pesticides to prevent insect damage, use fungicides to prevent fungal infections, or, or labor required for the pruning of orchards. These are opportunities for youths and women to acquire modern skills for gainful employment in crop plantations, but also in livestock farms. In livestock farms, such farms which are devoted primarily for breeding, raising and training of animals such as beef or dairy cows or even horses these animals need daily care and must be fed and watered some animals are moved to fresh pasture every day animals such as horses must be groomed trained and require other types of care such as showing milk cows have to be milked once or twice a day mares and cows must be bred managed throughout the pregnancy and help to deliver as necessary. Farm work will include routine veterinary care, such as immunizations, warming or castration of farm animals. So within even the livestock sector in on-farm on production, there are a lot of activities which can take place. In within the on-farm production, there is also the possibility of maintenance and repair. Maintenance and repair of farm equipment, general upkeep, on a farm, it's a daily process. For example, farm work includes fences that must be repaired, wooden fences or bands and outbuildings which must be painted, cleaned, repaired. Farm equipment such as spades and tractors and wheelbarrows must be cleaned, oiled regularly, greased, shovels and holes and post hole diggers and chainsaws must be sharpened. Other kinds of trades will require to perform electrical work, plumbing or carpentry in the farm and in agricultural installations across the agricultural value chain. Depending on their skills and strength, therefore, either women or youth could have access to modern professions related to maintenance that attract skillful personnel. Finally, and more interestingly and more important, within the farm, you need to hire a manager. Farms will need managers. Agricultural enterprises have effort has to be put to ensure that agricultural enterprises are modern with farm managers, medium scale farms and commercial farms. A farm is a business, whether it is small or large. And the farmer must maintain records of his commodities, records of crops and animals, records for sales and expenses, records for profits and losses, as well as employee payroll information for, for medium scale and large commercial farms. Large farms often have a mix of permanent employees and seasonal farm workers who are hired on a contract basis. They often employ one or more agricultural managers to oversee the daily operations of a farm. The farm owner or manager finds, hires and pays farm workers and must ensure that labor laws are followed. Even small family farms may hire seasonal temporary workers during harvest time. Women and youth with skills in agribusiness management are attracted to positions of farm management. Now, farm management looks more of a white collar activity, which will require formal, formal training, but there are a series of other uh, skills that are required in farm business management.
So if the agricultural sector is the live wire of the continent of Africa and the agricultural sector along its value chain has potentials to create jobs, there is need for a policy response. The policy has to respond to influence investments in the agricultural sector, because when policy responds favorably and influences more investments in the agricultural sector, there is a potential that more people will be needed to take, to take on the activities within the agricultural sector. Policy options for job creation will have to promote industrial agro-processing parks in our countries, in Africa. Policy options will have to promote the rural roads and infrastructure development, promotion of irrigation facilities, promotion of crop and livestock extension services, productive safety net programs or labor subsidy schemes, as well as rural skills enhancement. In the agriculture and food industry has great potential to generate job opportunities and improve conditions for workers and their families, particularly under a scenario of supporting industrial agro-processing parks and developing workers' skills through education. Education in formal colleges of education, formal colleges of training for diverse activities which are involved in the agricultural value chain. The agro-processing park is an interesting example, which, is, which has gained momentum and, and, and produced important results in, in, in Southeast Asia, in Singapore, in India, in the Philippines, in Malaysia and Thailand. The expansion of agro-parks is beneficial to food production. It speeds up the structural transformation of agriculture and will also improve the trade deficit through a massive increase in food exports and have significant positive impacts on the country's GDP. Agriculture and employment policies will therefore have to target the, the crop sector as well as the livestock sector for multiple job creation. But the livestock sector is more interesting as it has significant potential for generating employment followed by cash crops, food crops, and the agri-food industry indicating that policies focusing on rural and agri-food sectors have great potential to create job opportunities. But unfortunately in some countries countries in the continent and in some parts within the local governments, you know, a lot of effort is, is not been put on intensive production of, of livestock. Specific policies to invest in and develop the agricultural sector, particularly the livestock sector and agro-processing industrial parks, skills and education, particularly in agricultural technical, vocational education and training, are required as the most effective policy options for food and nutrition security. Overall, developing thriving manufacturing sectors in Africa, the development of agriculture and food value chains, as well as associated services, offers the potential to leverage agricultural development for wider benefits in terms of poverty reduction and food security. Policies that foster rural job opportunities have the additional benefits of reducing worker migration towards urban areas and favoring economic growth. The most important policies have to be double barrel, double pronged, double pronged. A double pronged or double barrel in the sense that they are good for both agricultural and non-agricultural development in rural areas. For example, basic investments in, in health and education will widen households' economic opportunities while at the same time, investments in public goods such as rural infrastructure and electrification are helpful to farmers as well as to people engaged in the production of manufacturers or the provision of, of services, okay? So these are investments or opportunities that will have positive multiplier effects, you know, positive externalities. Well-designed public investments in particular in infrastructure development will help crowd in private investment and support more and better jobs. So well-designed public investments will, 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 particularly on infrastructure development, will bring in, will bring in, will encourage, will motivate, will inspire more private investments, which will bring in more jobs. There is also the need to facilitate youth entrepreneurship as a, as a form of policy. Beyond training young people in agricultural best practices, there is an increasing, opportunity now across the continent 
and which have proven successful in other parts of the world, incubators to support young entrepreneurs to transform their innovative ideas into sustainable agribusiness. There are important case studies in the continent. The IITA Youth Entrepreneur Initiative has developed an 18 month entrepreneurship program for unemployed graduates with incubation centers in DRC Congo, Kenya, Nigeria, Tanzania, Uganda, and Zambia. Young graduates across Africa are typically coached and mentored on business opportunities in the production and value addition of agricultural commodities, such as soybean, fish, and other commodities. So that's an interesting case. That's an interesting case in which entrepreneurship has, been, has shown to work. Entrepreneurship has shown to be able to impart to youth some skills where they can have an increased affinity and attraction into the agricultural sector. Due to acknowledged structural constraints that burden agricultural development, the Comprehensive Africa Agricultural Development Program of the, of the African Union under the NEPAD initiative has chosen to structure and promote and structure investment programs and development around four fundamental pillars. So investments in agriculture have been recognized by at the, at the, at the highest level in the continent, the African Union. And the African Union under its NEPAD and its CADAP initiative has, has, has prioritized and we talked about the Malabo Declaration as, as well as the Maputo Declaration where countries sign up to increasing the level of investment in the agricultural sector and prioritizing the agricultural sector. So the, under the CADAP initiative, there are some pillars for, under which investments are, being, are, are required for promotion, land and water management, like we saw in the previous slides, land and, land and water management, soil enhancement will generate a lot of opportunities by hiring and using a lot of workers during during the peak season and even off season and this could be permanent semi permanent or part time workers with the objective of increasing the surface area of land which is farmed within the framework of sustainable land management pillar 2 of kadab is increasing the market access by focusing interventions on improving rural infrastructure and the development of trade related capacity so market access allowing agricultural producers, ensuring that the production from the farmer gets to the consumer along the value chain by facilitating market, market access. Pillar three is supply of food products and the fight against hunger with priority given to increasing the food supply, reducing the vulnerability of rural, of rural households and risk management. Pillar four is on agricultural research is on agricultural research with emphasis placed on research development, knowledge sharing and management, as well as technology dissemination and adoption. With all these efforts, without there is no gain without pain. Despite all the efforts to promote agriculture for its diverse gains, there is a possibility of failures. There are lots of uncertainties inherent in the agricultural sector. This will include weather, yield fluctuations and price challenges, government policies, global market challenges, and other factors that will impact farming and can disrupt opportunities within the agricultural sector. There are typically a few types, perhaps five of them, risks, that are prevalent within the agricultural sector. These are the production risks, the price risks, or market risks, financial risks, or institutional risks, and human or personal risks. Production risk derives from the uncertain natural growth processes of crops and livestock. Whether diseases, pests, and other factors affect both the quantity and quality of commodities produced. With respect to price and market risk, this refers to uncertainty about the prices producers will receive for commodities or the prices they must pay for inputs. The nature of price risks typically varies significantly from commodity to commodity. There is also financial risk, which results when the farm business borrows money and creates an obligation to repay the debt. 
the rising interest rates and the prospects of loan being called early by lenders and restricted credit availability are also aspects of financial risks. There is also institutional risks, which result from the uncertainties surrounding governmental actions, tax laws, regulations on chemical use rules for animal waste disposal and the level of price or income support payment subsidies given by government, you know, that can have a major impact on the farm business, okay? Finally, there is also human and personal or personal risk, which refers to factors such as problems with human health or personal relationships that can affect farm businesses. This will typically be things like accidents, illness, death, divorce are examples of personal crises that can threaten a farm business, especially a, farm, a family farm business or a commercial farm business. Once there are so, so, sociological challenges, it affects the performance of the enterprises. And it is the responsibility of farm managers to be able to manage these risks. Risk management will involve choosing among alternatives that reduce financial effects that can result from such uncertainties. Farmers have many options of managing risks they face, and most producers use a combination of strategies and tools. Some strategies deal with only one kind of risk, while others address multiple risks. Strategies will include, and which have been adopted by some farmers, include yield and revenue insurance schemes, futures and options, contracting sales and purchases, enterprise diversification, debt management and credit availability, and of farm employment. Agricultural policy must be aimed to reduce risks in the agricultural sector so that opportunities are not lost and benefits of food production, food security, raw material supplies, jobs and incomes are rather reinforced. Ladies and gentlemen, module four is very, very instructive on the potential in which the agricultural sector can create jobs. Africa has to look beyond the primitive, simplistic manner in which agriculture is being managed and, and, and promoted. Ag the agricultural value chain has the capacity to generate modern jobs for women and, and youth. Thank you so much.